today it's time for another colour palette project and this is the palette that I've chosen for October. This beautiful selection of warm autumnal tones based on this photograph of some leaves. As always, I'll pop the link down below to where I get these from. They're from designseeds.com. It's a website where there's hundreds of colour palettes for you to go and have a look at and get inspiration from. I'm going to be creating a layered jelly print today using some um, Deco Art Americana paints and we're going to be decorating some gift bags today. It's a really simple technique and hopefully I'll be able to give you a few tips and pointers to get good results every time that you try. So I'm going to move these out of the way, get my jelly plate out and we'll get on with the tutorial. Today I'm using my large jelly plate. This is my 8 by 10 inch plate. It's yellow because I've used alcohol inks in it in the past and it's stained it, but there's no transference. So don't worry if you start using other products and it gets stained. They still work perfectly fine. Do not worry. To fit in with the colour palette that I've chosen for October, I've got some Deco Art Americana paints. And I have light mocha, cadmium yellow, bright salmon, razzleberry, and dark chocolate. And they sort of best represent these colours here. I was considering using another one, a six one, but this, this last um, colour here is very similar to the one at the bottom. And I think six layers is then a little bit much, but I do like this range of autumnal colours. Again, use whatever paints you've got. The vast majority of acrylic paints are going to work absolutely fine on your gel plate. These are just a, you know, a good quality craft paint. They're not an artist's paint, they're just a craft paint and I do like them. I have prepared myself some leaf templates. And these are just die cut um, from some printer copier paper. Today I've been using a die that was a free gift with a magazine. I've used this metal die here that it came with the September issue of Papercraft Essentials here in the UK. There was um, There's another die that fits in that cuts out the veins and an embossing folder, but I'm just using the outline die. There are many, many companies that produce leaf cutting dies, you know, so it's easy to find. It doesn't have to be this one. If you don't have a die or a die cutting machine, you know, go on the internet, find some clip art of the shapes of leaves, print it out, cut them out, cut your own templates with a pair of scissors. You can use actual leaves. That's, it's not a problem if you've got some leaves in the garden. I mean, I have done printing with leaves in the past, which is why I've decided just to use a paper template here, but I will link up in the corner to the video where I have used um, leaves from the garden to create gel prints. And they work very, very well. But to say, for today, I've just used this one die and I've just cut myself lots and lots of templates, all the same. You can reuse them several times, but after, after a while they start to tear when you're lifting them off the, the plate. Um, these are ones that I used in my practice. But I'm not throwing them away because the side that got put into the paint has these beautiful uh, layered effects on and I'm going to use these to collage onto something. So I'm, I'm hanging on to the ones that I've used previously. I've got myself a brayer to apply my paint. I've got a piece of paper here just to roll the excess paint off my brayer. And I'm going to be printing onto some craft bags. We're going to make some um, like Halloween gift bags or autumn gift bags. You know, if you've got an autumn birthday and you want to just decorate something. These are just really nice. And just to show you, you don't have to print onto a white background. You know, having a toned paper in the background does actually make a difference as well. Now, if you have a limited number of bags and you don't want to risk messing up, um, just practice on a piece of printer paper. I mean, that's all I've done. I've, I've, I've played about with layers and just this is just printer paper. If it all goes wrong, it can go in the bin. You haven't wasted anything. If you end up with a print that you like, you can use it. So just have a little play about if it helps you to take a photograph of how of each layer as you do it so that if you get a print that you really like and you want to try and recreate that as best as you can, take step by step photos. You know, we've all got a smartphone with a camera on. It's so easy to do that. 
but part of the fun of printing is not quite knowing what you're going to get. So, you know, I do always encourage people just to have a play around and a practice. The rule that I'm going to follow today is I'm going to start with my palest colour first and work through to my darkest. And as I progress through, I will add more leaves so that when I am using the darkest colours, they're not, it's not going to be overpowering the print. So I want there to be um, more of the bottom layers showing through the, the further through the process I work. So to begin with, I'm going to use my pale colour, which is light mocha. I'm going to be working in fairly thin layers. Craft paint is, is more opaque than, um, say, sort of fluid acrylics. But we only need there to be thin layers. We don't want them to be too dense. The whole point of this is that we, we want to be able to see the different layers below. So just putting a nice, even, thin coat of paint over the surface of the plate. And I'm going to be arranging on here a few leaves. And the reason I've chosen to use this size plate today is because I want to cover the entire side of my bag and this, this plate is, is perfect, it's just slightly larger so I know my print will extend to the edge. So I'm going to press firmly down all over. And that started to create a, a toned background with some of the silhouettes of the leaves. I'm going to remove these leaf templates carefully so we can reuse them. And I'm going to clean off the paint that's left on my plate just with a damp cloth. You can pull ghost prints if you want in between, if you want to Either just put another piece of paper straight on and try and lift some more of the paint or paint a thin coat of another colour on and just lift what's left. You're more than welcome to do that. Today I don't need any extra prints, so I'm quite happy just to clean my plate in between layers with a damp piece of paper towel. For the second layer, I'm going to use the cadmium yellow. Once again, I'm going to apply a thin coat of paint. Let's clean the excess off onto my scrap of paper. And just reusing the same templates as before. I'm going to pop them down again in random fashion. And to take my bag, pop it back down again and press firmly all over. And as you can see, that creates the second layer, but we can still see where the outlines of some of the first layer were through it, just starting to create a sort of shadowed leaf effect. 
Again, remove your paper templates carefully and clean the plate off ready for the third layer. Next we're using the Bright Salmon. I really like this colour, it's like a nice warm uh, coral tone. And this time I'm going to add a few extra leaves in. For the first couple of layers I've used eight of these die cut leaves. I think this time I'm going to use ten. Just because as these colours are now getting deeper, I don't want them to overpower the whole print. So I want more of my plate to be masked off so that we can see the lighter colours underneath. So just adding in a few more there. And again, taking our bag, choosing where to place it, and pressing down firmly. And there's our next layer. Starting to really sort of take shape now, starting to see some depth in that design. So once again, clear this off, ready for your next layer. Our fourth layer is going to be this Razzleberry, which is a really nice um, sort of deep, pinky red colour. Just apply a nice even thin coat. Once again, lay our templates down. And I think, as in the previous step, I'm going to add another couple. So I think this time we'll have 12 leaves. Just so that we don't over darken the whole print. Now there's no reason why you can't overlap some of these, but just bear in mind that if you were to do that, you lose then some of that definition of the individual leaf shapes. So that's why I try and place them alongside each other rather than overlapping. And there we have our next layer, looking really, really pretty now, very autumnal. Again, I'll remove these and we'll be doing our final layer, which will be the dark chocolate colour. So this is our final layer today, the dark chocolate. Again, just a thin coat, evenly brayed over the surface. And we're going to place our leaf templates down for the final time.
just going to add an extra couple in and press our bag down for the very last time. And that's our final layer printed. And I'm, I really love the fact that the more that you look at it, the more you see the different layers, the, the overlapping of the colours. It creates a lot of depth and texture. And what was originally just a plain and simple bag becomes something much, much nicer. Now, obviously, I've got little bits of paint here on the handles, and I'm not bothered about that. I could always tie a little bit of ribbon round it. But if you were going to be concerned about that, pop a bit of masking tape around the bottom of the handle or something, or just make sure that you, you've got your handles off the plate. But to say, I'm not at all concerned about that. So I'm going to go and repeat this process on the other side and decorate the other side of my bag. And then I'll be back to show you the final result when I've finished. So here are my finished gift bags. First of all, this is the one that we printed. I've done the other side, so we've got both sides covered. Love the beautiful depth of colour that you get, the layered effect. I've just finished these off with a, a tag, just die cut a tag and attached it with some sari ribbons. The stamps I've used, again, from a magazine. This was from Creative Stamping Magazine, their Autumn Harvest selection. But, you know choose a sentiment that suits whatever um, occasion that you want to use the gift bag for and then just ink around the edges so that was our first bag and not to let any of the die cut um, leaf masks go to waste I mean I've got plenty of them left here and I've just used some decoupage medium I've used the Americana matte decoupage medium you know use Mod Podge whatever and I've just layered some of those onto the side of another bag. I've only done the one side this time, but you know, there's no reason why you couldn't decorate both sides. And again, just added a little tag, a bit of sari ribbon, and it's a really nice autumn gift bag for autumn birthdays. You could do these for Halloween. You could do them for Thanksgiving if that's what you celebrate. You know, there's lots of um, ideas here. You could create Christmas gift bags if you used perhaps a holly leaf um, design and laid it up in different shades of green. That would be really nice. Or, you know, for spring and Easter florals, all of this sort of technique is really good for lots of different things. But I hope that you enjoyed um, this video today. I hope that it fits in nicely uh, with the autumnal feel that we've got here, our October colour palette and taking away some of the mystery of how to create some exciting and interesting prints by using lots of different layers. So as always, please leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Um, check out the playlist that I've got of the jelly print videos that I've done in the past. I'll link to that at the end of the video. And I shall see you again next week with another video. But for now, that's all. Bye.